This video covers the solutions to problem 1 of the posted um, sample final exam from spring 16. Uh, so problem 1 is on a DC to AC uh, unipolar PWM converter. Uh, DC voltage of 200 volts and the grid voltage uh, 150 cosine 2 by 60 T. We are also given the filter L and its uh, resistance. The control voltage VCA uh, for leg A is given. So with unipolar PWM, VCB would be negative of this and the control voltage VCFT uh, is also same as the VCA of T. Um, so part A of this asks us to calculate several cycle by cycle values of different um, parameters. Um, first one is this uh, VAB at the output of the two pole converter, its average value. Uh, so the starting point of uh, this type of problems is to draw the um, full average model uh, which would be uh, the DC voltage uh, connected to the ideal transformer which represents the two pole uh, converter. So and then the primary goes to the DC source and the secondary goes to the filter inductor and now we also have its resistance then that gets connected to the grid voltage. Okay. So that's the uh, full average model. Uh, this is 150 cosine 77 T and uh, L and R. Okay. This is still a time domain average model so the L will be written as, as milli Henry and the resistance is always uh, in ohms, 0.5 ohms here. Okay. Then the key part is to write the turn ratio and it is 1 is to the control voltage VC of T. It's a time varying turn ratio uh, and VC is nothing but VCA and that is given as part of the problem statement. Um, and this voltage here is VAB bar. This is average model so all the quantities are cycle by cycle average quantities. Um, so the current flowing here would be actually IG bar. Um, the current here is the DC current average, ID bar, and so on. Okay, the first uh, uh, CCA value is the VAB bar. So that can be easily written as the secondary voltage of our average model. So, so that would be primary voltage times the turns ratio. So 200 times VC, which is same as VCA. That gives us uh, 160 cosine um, this 377 T plus 6 degrees. Okay, so this is already in time domain, so that's the answer for this part. The next one is VL, VR, and so on. Um, so this is slightly more involved. We will have to use phasor analysis to solve for uh, the simplest approach would be to solve for the grid current IG uh, and then. Um, then we can get the drop across these two impedances uh, once you know the grid current. So let's go ahead and draw the grid current first, um, derive the grid current first and this needs phasor analysis. So as before we will use the given grid voltage as the reference phasor, um, denote that by uppercase VG, it's a phasor now, it's um, magnitude is 150, same as the peak of the sinusoidal time domain voltage and the angle. Uh, since the grid voltage uh, as well as the VCA they are given in cosine uh, we can use uh, cosine as the reference uh, of the um, we can use the cosine as the basis for defining our phases so VG uh, would be defined as 150 angle 0 degrees okay. uh, if, if this both of these are given as sine let's say 150 sine omega t and the VCA is also 0.8 sine omega t plus 6 degrees then we will use sine as the basis, sine as the reference. Uh, so it is okay to use either of the two as long as uh, once defined at the beginning of the problem, you stick to that throughout the problem. Okay, then uh, we are looking for the current grid current IG. So as a phasor IG uh, can be calculated by applying, uh, for example, KVL around this loop. Okay. Uh, or in other words, the current is uh, VAB minus the VG grid voltage uh, divided by the impedance. So that would be VAB phasor uh, minus VG phasor divided by the impedance which is R plus J omega L. 
So VAB will not return this is a phase but we can do that easily. So that will be 160 magnitude angle of 6 degrees minus VG which is 150 angle 0 divided by um, R 0.5 plus J 377 is um, J omega. Sorry, this is J omega and the inductance here. Um, 377 times 5 millihenry, 5 10 to the minus 3. Okay, so once you solve this uh, complex uh, equation, we get Ig to be. Nine point seven seven angle minus thirteen point seven five degrees. And this is an amperes. Okay. So that solves the part four of uh, uh, part A. Okay, so we can use this to get the the drop across the two impedances. So next would be VL bar. First, I will write it as uh, so. Okay, since we have to give all of these in time domain, I also need to go one one more step. Ig of t would be nine point seven seven peak uh, uh, cosine here cosine of three seventy seven t minus the angle by which it actually lacks the grid voltage. So that's the final answer for for this part. Okay, so to get V L as a phasor, V L would be J omega L times the calculated I G. So that would be uh, again three seventy seven times uh, five ten to the minus three uh, times the I G uh, was nine point seven seven. Uh, angle would be J adds a plus 90 degrees so would be 90 minus the original current angle which was uh, 30.75 so that be VL and it comes out to be 18.416 uh, with an angle of 76.246 okay I can Go ahead and write this in time domain VL of T to be 18.416 uh, again cosine 377T plus that angle. This is volts. Similarly, VR would be simply R times IG. So R is 0.5, so we're just going to scale IG by 0.5. So we can write that directly. IR of T would be one half of this, and this part will be the same. Sorry, V R of T. V R of T would be one half of I G of T. So that's four point eight eight five. So cosine three seventy seven T. Oh, it's minus. Sorry, minus thirteen point seven five. Okay, so we're done with the first four. The last one is ID, the DC uh, link current. Okay, so ID has to be calculated um, in time domain. We should not just multiply the VC phaser and the uh, IG phaser. We need to do the multiplication in time domain. So ID, DC link current average is the turns ratio or the control voltage VC of T multiply by IG, IG of T, both of which have been calculated. Uh, so that gives us, um, okay, so the magnitude of the current was 9.77 and the magnitude of um, control voltage was, was 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 times 9.77 gives us 7.816, okay, times, um, there's a cosine term, in BCA, which is 377T plus 6 degrees, and the cosine term 
in the current IG is uh, same frequency minus uh, 30.75 degrees okay so this is um, cosine so this is a call this is a call this is uh, b uh, so we have cosine a times cosine b which is uh, one half of um, okay, one half of cosine of uh, a minus b plus um, cosine of a plus b okay. all right so this will simplify to 7.816 over 2 um, cosine of a minus b so the 377t would get cancelled so we'll have 6 uh, plus 13.75 Nine point seven five four. Okay, seven five. Um, plus the cosine of sum of the two. That would be the frequency doubling. Um, seven fifty four t. That's two two times three seventy seven. Um, then you'll have just six minus three point seven five, which is minus seven point seven five. Alright, so that is the slightly simplified version. We can simplify it even further. Um, so the 7.816 over 2 is uh, 3.9 um, multiplied by this cosine of 19.75 degrees gives me 3.678. And then the second term will be this complete 3.9, at least 3.91 um, cosine of this term 754t minus 7.75 and this is DC current so it's amperes that's the final answer okay then moving on to part B it asks us to calculate the active power average active power delivered to the to the grid uh, so we know uh, we, we also need to indicate whether the power uh, is positive or negative um, so we know that is going to be power delivered to the grid positive because the VAB has the leading phase angle 6 degrees therefore the power flow would be from the leading uh, phase angle which is VAB to the to the grid okay so since we have the grid voltage and the grid current uh, the average power P um, is uh, VG peak times IG peak over 2 uh, times cosine of the angle between the two okay. um, so that would be 150 times IG peak was um, 9.77 divided by 2 and the cosine of the current's angle voltage is the reference spacer so just the um, current angle um, 13.75 okay. um, minus or plus does not matter for the cosine so um, so which comes out to be 711.74 watts okay so um, if you want you can do a check it's not required as part of the problem statement but if you have time you can do this check um, and that is um, power balance so the power given to the grid uh, plus the power that is lost in the resistance there is no power loss in the inductor so the just these two power should add up to the power taken from the DC source okay. so we know the DC current um, only the the actual DC component of the ID uh, contributes to the power the 120 Hertz component does not contribute to power um, okay, so the power loss in the uh, resistance PR would be IRMS squared times the resistance or I peak squared over 2 times the resistance. Since we have the I peak uh, 9.77, I'll write this as uh, IG hat squared 
over 2 uh, times the r so that's uh, 9.77 squared over 2 times 0.5 gives me um, 23.86 watts okay then uh, p grid plus p r is uh, p grid is 711.74 plus the 23.86 um, should be 735.6 okay. power from the DC source PDC is 200 times the uh, DC component of ID which from the previous slide was 3.678 okay. so that should come out to be this value it does actually come out that way 735.6 so these two match right then part c is uh, this is simple just calculate the peak current and the voltage peak current reading and the voltage reading of the switches so all the switches whenever they connect they carry the inductor current or the grid current so whatever is the peak value of the grid current is the peak value of the switches also. So peak current reading is um, for IG the peak was 9.77. So that is the peak rating of the devices also. For the voltage rating, okay, this also is current rating, this is voltage rating. Um, which is uh, just the DC link voltage um, for a two pole converter the voltage stress is same as the DC voltage so it's 200 volts alright so that is the end of problem 1